Hey, welcome to the Economy and Politics Show. I'm Otto Basia Basiako. This edition will focus on the socioeconomic assessment of Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi states ahead of the Saturday, November 11, 2023, off-season gubernatorial elections. Two of the three states, Bayelsa and Imo, have incumbent governors, Senator Doye Diri of the People's Democratic Party and Senator Hoku Zolima of the All Progressive Congress, respectively, seeking re-election. So we'll extract the information from the body of work from two organizations, Budget and Analyst Data Services and Resources, on these three states and what is vital for the subnationals. The Prosher dictum says, in God we trust, every other thing is data. That was what will guide our conversation today. The first area is an assessment of the budget analysis of the fiscal performance ranking of the three states out of the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory in the recent Body State of Dates 2023 edition. From the infographics displayed on the screen, Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi must improve its fiscal management. Particularly, Bayelsa and Imo need to grow their internally generated revenue base. That is very important for them. Imo and Kogi states on their part need to watch their debt sustainability level as revealed from the budget report. While Imo and Kogi need to prioritize investing in capital expenditure to unlock the economy. In the next infographics that you're going to see now, it shows the breakdown of each state's fiscal performance. The three states must watch their domestic and foreign debt obligations. That is a must watch for them. Imo particularly needs to watch its debt service level, which is high at 35%. Next, we go to the Analyst Data Services and Resources ADSR report published titled 2022 Socioeconomic Scorecard of the 36 states in Nigeria. There are indicators for Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi, which we'll focus on for the sake of this conversation. This report showed that the states are not doing well in capital importation and investments. That is something that has to be addressed by whoever emerges as a governor of the states. Bayelsa particularly needs to make investments in information, communication, and technology infrastructure seriously because their ranking is not so good from what it has revealed. Bayelsa and Kogi also have to reposition in industrialization and business competitiveness to be viable across the country. So we've looked at the infographics around the various reports, but here are seven areas that should be priority for the winners of the November 11, 2023 gubernatorial elections. The first is cost-cutting measures. This has to be adopted to lead a more efficient government. We have seen high cost of governance, and it's very important that this is addressed by whoever emerges as governor-elect from the November 11, 2023 gubernatorial elections. The second is the need for strategic and robust investment promotion measures. Why? Because they need to boost capital importation. Like I said earlier, capital importation across the three states is very poor. Number three, there needs to be improved investment in education and health. We've seen some level of improvement in states like Imo when it has to do with education, but there's more work to be done. There's also the need to leverage the capital market to financialize and securitize idle assets for value creation, in the words of economist Dr. Yo Teriba. The time is now because states have to create value to sustain the economy. Number five is the need to prioritize the ease of doing business. From access to land and business permits, this has to be a top priority. People should be able to do business in a seamless manner across the three states. Number six is the need to identify key sectors of competitive advantage and game-changer economic projects. And let me just highlight something here. In Kogi State, you have the long-standing Ajakuta Steel Complex. It's a federal government project, but of course, the Kogi State government needs to drive advocacy for that project and also look at other viable projects that can unlock its depth of solid minerals. Also, for Imo State, being a gas hub and the blue economy prospects has to be leveraged alongside tourism to create opportunities for the economy and lastly, Bayelsa. Bayelsa is an oil and gas zone. We know about the oil and gas park forthcoming project, which will unlock opportunities in the state, but we need to see more serious strategic projects that key into the oil and gas ecosystem so that the state will really begin to be what it's meant to be, an oil and gas hub. And lastly, there's need to explore, that's number seven, the last, there's need to explore innovative ways to reduce debt and improve internal revenue. Those are very, two, those are two very important areas that have to be taken seriously. Reducing the debt level we've seen from the infographics, the debt level, sustainability level of some states, and also the challenges, even the debt per capita of some of the states is really, really something to consider and address. 
and of course improve the entire general revenue. Once this is done, states, these three states can begin to see sustainability, improved investments, and even the general welfare of the citizens. And that is the essence of having viable subnationals in the country. That will be all for this edition of the Economy and Politics Show. It was an interesting time analyzing the socioeconomic situation in the three states, Bielsa, Imo, and Kogi, ahead of the November 11th, 2023 gubernatorial elections. If you want to get further insights on this analysis, visit the ProShare website displayed on the screen, and also follow us Web TV social media platforms to engage further on this show. To become your way again, enrich yourself with the knowledge of socioeconomic developments around you, because it's a wise thing to do. And this is hoping for a very peaceful gubernatorial elections across the three states on Saturday. I'm Otto Thank you for watching and bye for now.